All right, you guys, this is gonna be the build of the year. And then completely dismantling and sectioning, cutting up a perfectly good Porsche Boxer. <laughs> What's up, people? This is a Lycan Hypersport. Yeah, no, it's not. This is a 2007 Porsche Boxster S, which is gonna get cut into pieces. So I'm giving the condemned man his last bath before that happens at Genius Garage. Genius Garage, as you all may know, have the Lycan Hypersport body that was part of the Fast and Furious Live program up in England before it went bankrupt. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity for the Genius Garage engineering students to get to build their own hypercar. So let's get down to the shop and check out the build that comes, you guys. All right, you guys, this is gonna be the build of the year. And naturally, we're looking forward for the Genius Garage Fast and the Furious Live Lycan to be a SEMA car in 2020. So in this first video of the series coming up, I would like to show you guys what's going to be involved with taking the composite bodywork, and I do mean bodywork, this is really only a shell on a junky Hot Wheels kind of chassis from the Fast and the Furious Live, and then completely dismantling and sectioning, cutting up a perfectly good Porsche Boxster yeah, that's not gonna make you a car. And this is not the old days, the 1970s, when you can just take something, take the body off of it, and put it on a shell. That's not gonna work. The wheelbase of this is, for one thing, is fairly longer than this. Not gonna work. So how are we actually going to do this, and what do we got? So tell you what, let's start with the Lycan and the bodywork, show you what we got, then let's go over the Boxster so we can make a plan before the next video. So come on over here, I wanna show you this. Let's, let's get down and dirty with what is good and bad about this. First of all, all the bodywork is here. For the vast majority of it, anything that's broken or cracked, we can fix. Anything that is kind of flexible like this, we can fix. Because keep in mind, this is nothing more than a stage prop. The chassis that this is on, and I'm gonna show it to you guys here right now. The chassis in this was never even painted. It wasn't made to last, nobody cared about it. Because this prop was literally just used to shoot out of a cannon. Clearly, they did not care about taking the doors on and off very often. But this is a hollow door. And all of these parts are absolutely correct to a Lycan Hypersport. This came out of the molds, but this is a junk prop. This is literally a full-size Hot Wheels car. This chassis is just meant to hold the body. There's nothing in here. A person doesn't sit in it. It's all held together. And the suspension and the wheels, they're not even able to turn. So we actually have to jack up this prop to turn it, just like a Hot Wheels car. In the past, and if you wanna look inside here, just take a look, right in there up into the front. Take a Look right up in there. You can see the suspension, really strong, and there's literally wooden two by fours where shocks would be. Because naturally when they liquidated all this, someone in England or Europe kept the shocks because they were valuable. So this is truly a big Hot Wheels car. So all we want, all we want out of this is the bodywork. This chassis, we're gonna cut it up, scrap what's there, get rid of the wheels. These wheels, not usable. First of all, they're not, they're not hypersport wheels. They're not even good wheels. These appear to be big, oh, 20 inch wheels with way too big a tires for a supercar or a sports car. Likely off of an SUV. And the reason being is this thing was shot out of what is effectively a second or third story height out of that fake airplane in the uh, live action show. So let's go on to the nature of this build and what's gonna to have to happen. I wanna talk about this Boxster. So this is the 2007 Porsche Boxster S. S is good because it's got a bigger, more powerful motor. And of course the six speed transaxle, which is very nice. Now, I realize there's a lot of people out there that think it's crazy to start with a nice car. Well, I see your... <laughs> yeah, it's real nice, right? Okay, nice except for the air shocks. But yeah, people are like, why don't you use a wrecked car? Why don't you use a junk one? Something with a blown motor, et cetera. 
Well, the reason being is we want nice parts. We want nice components to build the best hypercar we can. So the theoretical few thousand dollars you might save by starting with a uh, junky Porsche Boxster is by no means worth it. But I'm opening this up because I'd like you to come out here and just take a look at this vehicle. This is a production-based car with a unibody construction, okay, where effectively steel is all put together, pinched weld, bonded, etc., to make a monocoque chassis. But some of the pauses, I'm opening this up because I want you to be able to start looking at it in terms of its basic structure and basic form. Don't look at a Porsche Boxster. Don't think it's just a chassis with a body. That's not true. Because truthfully, you know, you got a chassis here in the middle. I'm going to open up the door because I want to illustrate this. Go, go look at the interior with the doors open. I want to show you something. This is an incredible performance machine. A Porsche Boxster at some point allegedly beat the Ferrari Enzo in the slalom record. And it did that without the structure of a hardtop. All of the structure of this car is right here in this floor. It's so stiff and strong and valuable that it it's, is torsionally rigid with no side members. And these doors really don't provide any extra torsional rigidity. Yeah, they latch on, but they're doors and they provide side impact safety. But all of the structure is here in the floor. And that's a good thing because when you start with a platform and bulkheads and where the suspension pieces and such bolt up, you want something that's really strong and really nice initially because of everything you create, if you do it with sound engineering practices, you know, if there's gonna be rollover structures or bars hidden up in the roof, it's gonna be strong, it's gonna be very rigid. And then when you go making power and working on your suspension and brakes, et cetera, then you're actually gonna be able to put that performance to the ground, if that makes sense. But this Porsche Boxster is gonna to have to be stripped totally down. Obviously gonna start probably with the bumpers, remove them, the lights, they're out. The front fenders, those will bolt right off. Naturally, the hood and the front trunk, whatever it is, <laughs> these big opening lids, these will be removed. And frankly, all these parts that we won't use again, Genius Garage will sell and recoup some of the money for somebody that needs to fix their car. But basically, everything has to be stripped down. The windshield will be removed. The doors will be removed. Everything will be removed. This, all of the soft top articulation, this, everything. Strip it down as far as you reasonably can. Now, at that point, this is not so simple as cutting it in half and stretching it and throwing a body on it and all of that. But one thing we're going to do, I think in the next video, which is going to be a lot of fun, how far can you strip down a Porsche Boxster to its rudimentary bare bones and still drive it, have it function properly, and how light will it be? So in the next video, we're going to weigh this car before it gets stripped down and then strip it down and see how lightweight we can make it and still drive a Mad Max style Porsche go-kart, just for fun. Why not? But it will tell us how lightweight can you make the basic structure and still have it function? Because that gives you a really good telltale for the whole in terms of an engineering project with what you can make in the future. Now, there's something else I want to point out. If you come on over here and look at this dashboard area. So, stand right over here and look at it this way. Let's talk about some of the relations spatially and how important they are when building something like that. Now, the Hypersport, stay right there, the Hypersport has a longer wheelbase. But for all intents and purposes, in relation to the front wheels and the suspension and all, the dashboard and the controls and the seats are roughly in the same location, which is good because there's a lot of complexities in this dashboard. And even if we change the way it looks superficially, gauges, you know, ventilation, steering wheels, whatever, it's still nice to have all that structure and all that functioning stuff underneath in roughly the same place because it would be a massive amount of work to be moving that in relation to the front wheels. So the hope, of course, is that the general of the dashboard area and controls, et cetera, in relation to the front suspension and wheels will be the same as what will fit this Hypersport. That'll be really good, and I think that's going to happen. And of course, the seats, uh, even though we're likely to make our own seats or upgrade them for you know, a hypercar, they'll still be able to bolt in roughly the same location. And hopefully, we can even still use the same seatbelt safety areas and all that, because Porsche did a really great job of developing that. And um, oftentimes, you know, it's fun to think that everything that people do aftermarket is better, but, and that is the case oftentimes, but factories do spend untold millions of dollars developing things, and sometimes they do a really good job. So, in regard to safety and dashboard and all that, hopefully that stays the same. However, here's what's going to differ a lot. The relation of the rear wheels 
to the cockpit and everything is vastly different. On this Hypersport, the wheels are now further back in a longer chassis than what it is. So the wheels, the rear wheels in relation to the half shafts, to the transaxle that's here, because the engine in a box in a Hypersport, a longitudinal Porsche, six cylinder, that relationship has to stay the same to the suspension and the rear wheels. So if you consider all of the drivetrain with its suspension as a single unit, and as a note, people who've ever done a full service or seen on say like a Ferrari Testarossa from the 80s, that entire unit drops out of the car to service it. Suspension, exhaust, rear framework, um, drivetrain, everything, which is really neat. So in a manner of speaking, we're going to have to dissect surgically this Porsche Boxster so the drivetrain, rear suspension, and all of the bulkhead connections that tie it together can be removed as one unit. Because then that entire assembly, shall we call it, can effectively be placed in space where it needs to be to work with this very chic hypersport clothing. And from there, then the, en the engineering um, constraints, as well as what we have to do to make it all come together will be apparent. And that's where the engineering intrigue comes into play. Because with every single engineering thing people do, there's always compromises, there's always constraints, there's things that have to be worked on. You can never make something perfect from the ground up, generally speaking. And for us, these are our constraints. Where do these massive parts and pieces have to go in space that's different than the Porsche, but correct for the Hypersport? So and then there's going to be space. And we're going to have to weld and construct and do things that relate to monocoque and even tubular steel and how to translate all that. And will we get into doing composites of anything that's structural? That is going to be the intrigue of this build and the reason why it's the build of the year. Because I realized that back in the day with kit cars, you all think about taking a VW floor pan back in the 70s and throwing a fiberglass body on it. <laughs> well, guys, we are a long, long way from home, Dorothy. It's not like that anymore. This is a full, legit, real build. And it's very exciting that we get to share doing something like this, building our own custom movie prop hyper car using great Porsche components for Genius Garage. And so all the young people out there around the world that aspire to build, to engineer, to be mechanics, restorers, fabricators, makers, you name it, will be inspired and learned from this through Genius Garage. So really excited about that. Um, I have always finished every project I've started with very, very few exceptions. And the only one I can think of was a DeLorean race car way back when because the guy that was supposed to be welding it, he just couldn't do it in time. That stunk. But <laughs> when it comes down to something that I have the ability to, to actually put my hands over and make happen, it gets done. So I hope you guys all subscribe, share this, stay tuned. This is truly going to be the build of the year. Genius Garage builds their own hypercar. And naturally really excited about the collaboration with VinWiki. So if you're not subscribed to Ed Bullion's channel, VinWiki, awesome place for the car culture and stories. And we will. I will be back there telling the tales, and I'm sure there's gonna be some fun real world collaborations to come later this year. I so hope you enjoyed today's video, and naturally that you will subscribe, but please click that bell so I can continue to bring you wholesome and entertaining automotive content. Also, a huge thanks to Avalon King Ceramic Coating. They're supporting this channel and making this all possible. But more importantly, I'm looking forward to using it on all of my vehicles, including my old dirt bike. Ceramic coating bonds directly to the surface of your paint, trim, and plastics to give a long-lasting shine that beats all waxes. It lasts for years and it's easy to maintain. I've got it on my Viper right now and my car has never looked this good. So give them a try. Again, thanks for watching and I look forward to see you next time.